This is the Teammates Mentoring Hour. I am DP. Thank you guys for hanging out with us on a Wednesday night. Um, an hour of purpose and mission. Hour of service. It's what we define this as. Some of the best of Lincoln's community and Nebraska's community all wrapped up in one place with one, one direction. Greatly appreciate it. If you guys want to add to the conversation, join the conversation. 402-464-5685. Sarder Heyman Tech's on Honda Lincoln Hotline. And you can follow the live video stream, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter Live. See what's going on in studio. Uh, we are better looking today. That's how that works. Uh, you know, when you get when you get your guy in the space, you know, you bring him in. Let's bring in leadership uh, defined. Good morning, Adams. How are you, brother? Hey, I appreciate you for having me. Uh, you're looking good with your Husker gear. You know, I, I decided to show some love to one of our partners, Bridges Trust. You okay. know, they do great work for teammates, mentoring. So mm -hmm. shout out to Nick and his crew. Well, I had to, I had to represent the other way. I had to get you up top. Uh, yeah, yeah. I had to, I had to get it up top, but that is representing uh, our fine guest tonight. Would you introduce uh, our special guest this evening, kind sir? Yes. We also have on a call co-founder uh, Tom Osborne, coach Osborne, Dr. Osborne, Thomas Wilson Osborne. <laughs> uh, he has so many names now. Goat, goat, coach. Welcome to the show. Thank you for uh, adding for not only what you do, but this hour defined is an opportunity for us to find more mentors in this space for the young people in the communities of Nebraska that need it. Um, coach, first of all, how are you? Well, doing fine, and uh, want to thank you for having us on. Actually, uh, I'm just on the phone because I have a better face for radio and. Uh, <laughs> So I thought this might work out better. Des Moines is more photogenic than I am, but um, Des Moines has been doing a great job with teammates. And uh, so we uh, we're really pleased with the staff we have. And we've had a great uh, bunch of mentors who've stepped up. We still need more. Th that is the, that is the priority and focus today. Last visit we had uh, mentors in, and they were talking about the, the, the that line of young people who are waiting who were just waiting. And we talked about how the length of some of the wait for these young people. So the challenge in this hour to the folks who are listening is to identify who you are and what you can do for these young people. Like no matter who you are, no matter what you're doing, no matter where you are in your life, there's a young person in this community that is waiting exactly for you. And I think that's the message in, in that. Des Moines, I'll ask you, what, what is that list, that wait list for the folks, for the young people who waited the longest? How long is that, is that wait? Uh, you know, uh, you know, we can sit here and say 100, 200, 500, but we, we know that there are at least 500 students here in the Lincoln area that have said, yes, I would love to have a teammates mentor. Uh, but as years go by, you know, that waiting list, unfortunately, gets smaller because students lose interest. And they're more connected to their Facebook or Twitter or Snapchat than to be interested in that face-to-face -face role model. And so that one hour only includes 20 to 30 minutes meeting with a student with that additional 10 to 15 minutes to get to the school and to get back to your home or place of business. And so it doesn't take a lot. All we ask is for you to simply show up and be there for another young person. Coach, when, when this thing is put together, when the idea and the concept is there, did you have any idea that it would reach, have the reach that it currently does? Because you're reaching parts of the state that, quite frankly, require extended purpose. I mean, any idea at all that this would become what it's become? No, it's like, like a lot of endeavors that um, start out with one, one thought and the the reason we started teammates was that um, I started coaching in 1962. Long well, about 1991, I began to realize that uh, the the uh, student body that we were recruiting had changed a lot. Back in the early 60s, uh, most families were stable. There was no drug culture to speak of. Maybe a little bit of alcohol and um, didn't have social media, and uh, and so a lot of things had changed, and so I thought, well, maybe we take a shot at seeing we could do something about it. And I got up from our football team one day, and I said, how many of you guys be willing to serve as a mentor to a seventh or eighth grade boy? 
here in Lincoln. I don't know why I said seventh or eighth grade. That just popped into my head. And uh, 22 hands went up, and so we went to Lincoln Public Schools and asked them if they would have 22 young men who would like to have a football player as a mentor. And they said, well, yeah, we think that worked out. And uh, we matched them up, and uh, we uh, once a month we'd get together and have some pizza and play some basketball and have a speaker. And then we just told the players, meet with these young guys uh, once a week, and you want to bring them to practice, you can, and whatever. Things seem to be going pretty well. And uh, finally, uh, they got to be seniors in high school. And we were very pleasantly surprised because of the, of the 22, 21 graduated on time. And one guy was a year late, so they all graduated. The thing that really amazed us was of the 22, 18 went on to college. And we thought from that group that maybe three or four or five would go. And so uh, because of that, we decided that maybe there was something to this. We expanded first here in Lincoln, began to use adults as mentors spread across the state and then into Iowa and then to Kansas, South Dakota, Wyoming. And so uh, we're mentoring about 10,000 kids. But as the morning mentioned, we always have about a third more we're waiting for mentors, and we have mentors. There's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 3,000 kids out there in various mentoring um, communities who like a mentor. Now, I am by just saying this. I'm, I'm mentoring a young man now over at Lincoln East. He's in the ninth grade, and he's signed up and asked for a mentor for three years before I finally showed up. And uh, that, that shows you what the need is. And this guy is really looking forward to having a mentor. And uh, so even though I'm 80 and I'm beat up, he seems to be really happy to see me. And and uh, so we have a good match. Coach, over the course of this whole thing, how many mentees do you think you've 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 actually sat face to face with over the course of the years? Well, personally, I have mentored now seven kids, and uh, one of them for 13 years. I've usually had two at a time. But in terms of mentoring, teammates mentoring, we have mentored over 43,000 young people since 1991. And, of course, the numbers have increased uh, exponentially over the last four or five years. Des Moines, same question in that space, right? Since you've become a part of this thing, and now as a part of leadership, I mean that, that it's that's what leadership is is showing the way. Yeah. What about you? What are those numbers for you? So I started as a mentor as a student athlete, as a college football player. I mentored over three years, even though I did not get a chance to finish the relationship. I did find out that he graduated, and um, he found me, and he's in Arizona. He's doing great. Uh, since I've been with teammates, I've helped four students graduate from high school. Um, one of them that I'm still his mentor has a teammates plus because teammates doesn't have to stop when a student graduates from high school. If a student is pursuing some form of post-secondary education, um, you know, that's a great way to help them to, to get to and through college because nationally only about 68% of college students make it to their second year. But over the last 10 years, teammates has been able to show that when a college student has a mentor, 91% of our students persist to their second year, higher than a national average. Des Moines Adams, Dr. Tom Osborne. Uh, Coach, this, I mean, what Des Moines just said resonates deep. I mean, that's a huge vibration when you can say that we can take the number and, 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 make it greater simply by being present. But I'll ask you, Coach, if what is it about teammates that gets these young people, not only through high school, but through that, that, that important second year? What, what thing is added that makes this thing happen? Well, I think mean, it's a combination of things. Um, number one, we're, we're strengths-oriented. And so with most of our mentees and mentors, 
we determine what their strengths are. And um, and so often we match strengths accordingly. And it's important for the mentor to know what makes that young person tick. And uh, for instance, if a, if a mentor is kind of a, an aggressive hard charger and they're mentoring a young person who's a little bit more reticent, maybe shy, a little bit laid back, uh, that mentor can kind of understand that it's not going to be really good to approach this person with a three-point plan and say, well, I'm going to fix you, and in three weeks you'll all be, you'll be all set. Right. You need to listen. You need to care. You need to be there. And so um, we train our mentors, usually about a two-hour training session, and we train, train the mentees so they know what to expect. And then the, we have a building coordinator in every building that has teammates. And so that building coordinator knows the student and gets to know the mentor and make sure that the matches are made based on somewhat similar interests. So if somebody's interested in music, the arts, and somebody else is, is uh, the mentor is interested only in athletics, probably not a good fix. So we may, we make sure that we mentor and we match people with common interests. And, uh, and so that works well. And, um, this last year we graduated 98% of our seniors from high school. And, uh, almost every year it's been at least 95% or more. And the national average is somewhere around 85, 86%. And, uh, so we, we feel very good about the academic progress. But we also understand that, uh, for the most part, these kids become better people. Just having somebody in their life who cares about them unconditionally uh, really makes a difference. Des Moines, walk us through that process for potential mentors out there. And as they sit there and listen, and they're leaning in because it's, now they're curious. What gets them most often across the bridge to reaching out to mentor uh, to teammates and saying, "Hey, look, I need to do this." I would say first having the confidence. Um, you know, we always say that to be a mentor, you don't have to be a tutor. You don't have to know algebra. You don't have to come in and feel this urge to fix a young person. Uh, we're simply just asking you to show up once a week. 20 to 30 minutes, maybe over their lunch break, uh, play a game, uh, listen, uh, talk about life, uh, be that additional caring adult in their life. There's not their mom, not their father, not a teacher. Um, mentors, again, they come from different backgrounds, different experiences, whether they're 18 years of age or 85, like Coach Osborne, there are no excuses. I mean, for our co-founder to have two mentees, if he can find the time, then there really isn't an excuse. So I would say the one thing that trips people over is, will I be a good mentor? We provide the resources. You don't have to be an expert. You simply just have to be there. Well, it's it's. It's Dr. Tom Osborne, Des Moines Adams, teammates mentoring, and even on a local level, there are areas of need, pockets of need, where there are certain spaces that need to be. Coach, I'll ask for the folks, they get the opportunity to help out where they are, so it is not geographically a problem. Mentors can mentor where they are, correct? Right. We're, um, for instance, here in Lincoln, we're in every school building. We start with um, young people as young as third grade, stay with them through high school. And then as Des Moines, Des Moines mentioned, we do post-secondary mentoring also for those students who go on to community college or trade school or four-year four year university. And um, so it may be a school close to your place of business, or it may be close to your home or with whatever is most, most convenient. And the mentor can choose the grade level. Some people are more uh, comfortable with a third or fourth or fifth grader. And some people feel like they'd like to have a high school mentee, ninth, 10th grade. 
And then some people are interested in a postgraduate uh, uh, mentor, somebody that's uh, going to college. And so um, there's a wide variety of experiences that are available. And we try to tailor that to the, the needs and the wishes of the mentor. Through through the conversations we've had over the course of, of a year, like a lot of the best things are when a mentor finds their, their footing, like they get their grown up mentor legs, right? They're not afraid anymore. What's the biggest misconception about being a mentor? What is the thing that people think, I should be afraid of this because this might not work. You, you know, I think there's a misperception that, you know, mentoring is for at-risk kids. You know, it's a thing for kids that, quote unquote, need a mentor. You know, I feel that the culture, the culture of mentoring is like a village. And they say that it takes a village to raise a child. So if, if there are any adults out there that truly care about their community, the Lincoln community, Grand Island, Omaha, et cetera, uh, one of the ways that you can show that care and demonstrate your leadership is to use your role to be a role model. Uh, that's all we're asking. That's all we're trying to do. The culture of mentoring is simply uh, me becoming that village. It takes a village. Teamwork is what makes the dream work. And so mentoring works and 91% of mentors have reported that they feel more engaged when they go back to the workplace and when they go home. So it makes them happy. I mean, I mean, not only are students getting something from being a part of teammates, our mentors are leaving that relationship feeling more engaged and happy when they go back to home. Coach Osborne, what of the Lincoln public schools? How many coaches in those buildings? What percentage? Do we are we shooting a hundred? Are we batting a hundred and getting all of the coaching? Because that seems to be in a building that you're in, the leaders would step up. Coach, yeah. any idea whether we're well, we're getting the coaches that we should? Well, I can't. I can't tell you. You're talking about specific coaches that yeah. are yeah. coaching sports. Yeah. yeah. I think I think some are. I know some are, and uh, of course, at its best, coaching is mentoring. And some of them feel like, well, I'm with these guys every day for <laughs> two hours, and <sighs> and I'm uh, mentoring them in that way. So it's a combination. I remember we had one gentleman who had Parkinson's, and he was well into his seventies, and he he mentored five young people. And he mentored one each day of the week. And uh, he was tremendously consistent. And it kind of gave him a purpose, a reason to live. And he was a great mentor. And so our mentors come in all shapes and sizes. Some are 19, 20 years old, college students. Some are in their middle of their professions. The average, I think, age for a teammates mentors somewhere around 40 to 45. And then there's guys and women like me. And, um, and so you don't have to be anything special, but let me point one thing out. And that is that the, uh, the national mentoring partnership did a survey. And they said of young people in the United States of mentoring age, which would generally be from about the third grade through the 12th grade. They said there are 9 million kids out of roughly 60, 65 million that say that they have no adult in their life that cares about them unconditionally. That's about one out of six, one out of seven. And uh, so as Des Moines mentioned, we, uh, we have kids from great families. We have kids from very solid situations economically. And then we have kids that are certainly in danger of, of falling through the cracks. And uh, I got an email just a couple of days ago from a former player of mine. And uh, he mentioned that he had been mentoring a young guy. The, the young guy's father was in prison. And the mother had married, remarried and had a second family and abandoned this young guy. And so he had absolutely no support. But 
the uh, young man who was a former player who has been mentoring him said that he's really come a long ways. He's currently a straight A student. He's in high school and he's getting ready to go to the university. And uh, so we have stories like that too. But it's also important to realize that, um, you know, in this day and age with computers and all of the electronic uh, gadgets around us, it's possible to work 16, 18 hour days. And, and uh, I know as a coach, <laughs> I, uh, I had some really long days and sometimes the very best of parents uh, are kind of like two ships passing the night with their kids. And so I kept hearing over and over from mentors, you know, that they were telling me, you know, I think I get as much or more out of this than my mentee. I kept hearing that. And so I thought, well, let me research this a little bit. So I, I picked out about 50 people that had been mentoring for five, six, seven, eight years. And I sent them a, a letter and I said, what do you mean when you say that you think you get more out of it than your mentee? And some of them said, well, it, it just makes me feel good when this young person sees me and runs up and hugs me and uh, seemed to be overjoyed to see me. And, uh, and then some have said, well, I really come to know more about what's going on with young people, you know, what they're, what they're thinking, what goes on in school and what goes on outside of school. And, uh, and then there were some that said, you know, it's made me a better parent because I see the power of sitting and listening and, and being with some young person and just loving them unconditionally. And so often that wasn't occurring in my parenting. And so it's made me a better parent. But I think when you when you put all of that together and you begin to look underneath all of those answers, what they're really saying is that uh, being a mentor gives my life greater purpose and meaning. And there was a survey by Gallup a few years ago. It's kind of interesting. They asked several thousand Americans. They said, number one, are you happy? And happiness was defined primarily, I guess, in terms of having your needs met. And most Americans said, yeah, I'm, I'm relatively happy. I have, I have shelter. I have enough to eat. I have transportation and I have some discretionary wealth. And, uh, and so happiness was more or less getting and receiving, maybe sometimes taking. And then they asked this question. They said, um, does your life have purpose and meaning? And the answer came back quite frequently, not so much. And so what they found was that purpose and meaning in a person's life comes not from getting or receiving, but having purpose and meaning comes from giving and serving and sometimes sacrificing. And so I think that's what really is what our mentors are talking about. It just gives them a greater sense of fulfillment and purpose and meaning. And they report always feeling better after their mentoring session. They report going back to work energized. And so it's not a one-way street where the mentor simply gives and gives and gives. But both the mentor and the mentee benefit significantly.